Another great thing about React Query is that it comes with dedicated dev tools. And trust me when I say this, you'll want these dev tools in any app you're building. They help you visualize all of the inner workings of React Query and will likely save you hours of debugging. Let's see how to add it to our application. Step one, import the dev tools from the React Query package. And we do this in app.js. Import React Query dev tools from React Query slash dev tools. And then just before the closing provider tag, include the component React Query dev tools. We're going to set a prop called initial is open to false as we don't want the dev tools open by default. Also, as a personal preference, I like the dev tools button positioned bottom right. So I'm going to add another prop position. And this is going to be equal to bottom right. And the import in fact is lowercase t. If we now go back to the browser, we should see a floating action button placed at the bottom right of our screen. If I click on the button, the DevTools panel opens. The panel is empty to begin with. Let's now navigate to the RQ Superheroes page. You can see the panel is now populated because of the use query hook that is executed. Typically, we would see a list of queries identified by their query key. We just have one query, so it is being displayed. Superheroes is the key we have passed in to the use query hook. We also have a filter and a sort dropdown to narrow down if we have a lot of queries at the same time. We don't really have a use for them in the series. Above these controls, we also have four badges that indicate the status of the query. Fresh, fetching, stale, and inactive. We will learn more about them in the upcoming videos. Let's now talk about the individual query. When I click on the superheroes query, a panel opens to the right, which gives us more details about this query. The status is stale and we have one observer, which is the React Query Superheroes page. We also have the time the query was last updated at. We then have an actions card, which lets us perform some actions related to the query, like refetching, invalidating, resetting, and removing the query. Although we do have these buttons to perform some actions, they are typically triggered by the code we write in our components. So let's not worry about these buttons right now and learn about the actions later on in the series. After the actions, we have the data explorer. This gives you pretty much all the information you would otherwise see in the network tab. We have the status 200, Status text, OK. Headers. Any configuration. And of course, the data, which in our case is an array of three superheroes. This, as you can see, is much easier than trying to identify your request in the network panel and going through the response. Finally, we have the Query Explorer which contains configuration information and current state details about the query. This is not too important for us right now, so I'm going to skip this bit to avoid making the video more complex than it should be. Now I am going to be making use of these dev tools for the remainder of this series, so please do add it to your application as well if you haven't already. Learning about dev tools 
goes hand in hand with learning the different concepts in React Query. All right, thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.